three, two, one. Hi, welcome to Zero Fucks Given. I'm your host, Krista DeLuca. Joined with me today is Carson Block. <laughs> no, 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 this is no, good. No, this no, is good. No, 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 this is good. Because, is good. Hang on. No, no, no. Because I want to I wanna let, let the audience know. While Krista maybe can't do an intro to save her life, she can hold a plank for four minutes. I can. Four minutes. You did that yesterday. That I was legit. Can. I was there. But I timed it. Four minutes legit plank. So don't worry about the intro, man. Like, can I that's, tell our audience something? I would like to say something. That's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> this guy totally fucks me up all the time. And like, I just... I swear to God, I'm ready to do a nice intro, and How then he's like, "How did I fuck like, you up on that?" They, he's like, "Okay, they, mention this, mention that, mention uh, real visions, <laughs> mention da da da," and then then you mention this. So like, I get all tongue tied. Has anybody ever told you that you are your own worst enemy? Many people. I didn't fuck you up. <laughs> You fucked me up. Okay. Right. Should we redo this? No. no. For those of no, you who are wondering who I am, I'll just introduce myself. Hi, it's Freddie from Zeros. Krista forgot me. Well, Look at that camera. Oh, yeah. oh, right. Looking at the wrong <laughs> right. camera again. Yeah. But well, Freddie, there's... we have something, you know, because you weren't here this week, and uh -huh. I really, 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 really missed you. Yeah. And he was sort of here, but sort of not. You know? Okay. And so I got something to replace you. It's and almost like we didn't want to introduce you because <laughs> uh, we had to wait for. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> now this isn't this isn't this isn't the most realistic depiction of you. Uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this, show it. Show okay. it. This, show this it completes our... me. This completes me. First of all, how nice am I to right. you? Look at that. Wow. Thing. Here, take take it. This is. Okay, for those of you who are listening, you're you're really missing out, and I would seven. I would honestly strongly suggest that for this week and this week alone, you actually you come and watch, because we've got um, someone resembling me but with slightly more stubble than I'm ever going to be able to grow. But we've look got at a hair. Look serious at hair, serious serious package. That's about the length of short I like to wear, ideally. <laughs> and uh, thank you, guys. I'm actually know, really touched. This know, is, right? it's good to see that things were productive was while I was me. away. This, oh, okay. yeah. By, by the way, I, in addition this to really four good. minute planks, this was entirely Krista's is, doing. Oh, well, you've she, got the shoes as well? Yes. Yeah. The little elf shoes? Yes. This is awesome. Okay, yeah, this, this is a classic. And, and, and this is I, a permanent fixture. But the only thing I tried was to change entirely, was that, because that's not <laughs> realistic at all. Realistic. We, we have a couple of binder clips on it to try, <laughs> know, to, try like, to keep it from inflating. Okay, let's, we got to, okay, didn't work. we got to, like, keep so it So with, So without yeah. the clips, it would actually be more impressive. Okay. Yeah, he's going to have to. Let's let's put them in the corner. This is a permanent fixture. This is awesome. This is genuinely awesome. Them. Will you stay up? It, might, um, on, it me, might not. Let me help you. Hang on, let me. All right. It might not. <laughs> <laughs> Please stand up. Okay, you might. We, we're going to get him and anyway. stand up. We're just going to. Yeah. All right. There you go. go. There's Robin. Thank you, guys. I'm touched. It's nice to know you think about me while I'm not I, here, Krista. This, I, and this was entirely Krista's idea and execution, by the way. This is awesome. And she even cut you know the. What, Robin, the I way might not know the. your name, buddy. <laughs> or your last name, but. This is awesome. But she knows yeah. how to recreate you. Yeah. Anyway, so. Thank you. I'm um, very touched, guys. <laughs> moving forward, um, what do we have to discuss today? Recent panel discussion on PCAOB. Carson Block, take it away. Okay. So we actually didn't talk about this yep. after the U.S. and China reached that agreement mm -hmm. to supposedly allow PCAOB inspections of the China-based auditors. It's going to take place initially in Hong Kong. And anyway, I was asked by an organization that focuses on foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. I was asked by a group of theirs that their focus is on Asia to do a panel, a virtual panel, which I did recently uh, with a few people who are, I definitely know in the kind of pro-China, pro-integration of capital markets camp. But uh, I mean, this is a redux of a panel that we did, same people basically two years ago when the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act mm -hmm. just, just passed. But anyway, doing this, I'm the last of the panelists to speak. So first one, oh, this is great. I think China is really serious and is going to cooperate. Second one, well, I hope China cooperates. It'd be good for investors. And then me. 
So I said, well, I don't know. This is a coin flip as far as I'm concerned as to whether China is really going to um, cooperate over the long term with this, this inspection regime because I can make arguments in favor of this just being a delaying tactic to try to get these companies consolidated in the U.S. and then relisted in Hong Kong, which doesn't have a ton of liquidity, mm-hmm. or maybe it's the real deal. And so when I was listing the factors in favor of it potentially being um, genuinely intended, I started to talk about the Taiwan situation. And I just so I started off by saying, you know, if you'd asked me a couple of years ago, would China unilaterally invade Taiwan ever, I would have said absolutely not. But in the past few years, I've come to and then all of a sudden the moderator cuts me off. This is an American guy. He's like, Carson, Carson, no, we uh, let's let's stick to the topic at can. Let's stick to the PCAOB agreement, not talk about any extraneous factors. It's like, so first of all, nobody puts baby in the corner. Fuck that shit, right? <laughs> so I was like, you invited me to speak. You let me speak. And this does relate exactly to PCAOB. And so I made the point that China could be strategically thinking about this in terms of the more we co-opt, and I'd already explained how I'm very much with uh, former General H.R. McMaster in his assessment that China has been excellent at co-opting American elite and Western elite. And so I'm basically talking to like a Zoom crowd full of co-opted American elite. So, but, but anyway, um, yeah, I, I go on and make the point that by, uh, by basically keeping or even getting more Americans like Larry Fink's skin in the game of these, Mm -hmm. you know, the China-U.S. equity business, it's going to provide more political cover for China to invade Taiwan because it would increase the pressure on an administration not not to react. So anyway, that's, that's what I said. But the thing that's crazy is like this is foreign affairs organization, the Asia focused, and this is the elephant in the room. We could talk about any issue in Asia, any. And it pales in comparison to whether China will invade Taiwan and how the fuck, I mean, it's like I insulted somebody's religion. It's just how the fuck do you guys like intellectually think that there's any honesty in in this approach of just let's talk about everything with Asia, but not this, not this, not this. The cool thing is we're about to insult people's religions later on in the show. (laughs) So if you are into that, stay tuned in and this is a safe space for that. And, and I, you know, I think, that's why I have no religion, so nobody can insult my religion. And I, it's even better, I can insult them all. It's like my blood type. I'm the universal <laughs> oh, receptor, AB positive. Nobody can accept my blood except AB positive, but I can take anybody else's blood. So, you know, this is a way of life. Interesting. Is it? it I mean, I didn't know that, so I I'll did. put it down in the end. Oh, yeah, well, you spent he, the whole weekend, didn't no, you? No, no, like he interviewed me and he told me this. <laughs> really? That was a screening question? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure like, that's legal in California know, if you are listening. I know, um, a lot. <laughs> well, I think what I found interesting what you're saying is there was uh, there was an announcement this week from, I think, a, a group of the banks who basically said, like, yeah, we would pull out of China if it's deemed that, you know, the government want us to as part of some response. And all I'm thinking is, your operations there must be fucking hemorrhaging cash. If you are hand up being like, we're prepared to be patriotic and just pull the fuck out. Like, you <laughs> give us the signal and we will pull out so fast. The only thing that you can be thinking is like, stop the bleeding. And um, I'm really thinking that that might be the ultimate end incentive for China to invade. It's just like Jamie Dimon getting over them and being like, look guys, we're losing so much money. Like, we'll, we'll, back end's fine. Like, you know, we'll keep all your offshore accounts. Just invade so we can pull out without losing face. But we need to, and I should try to pitch this to the DOD or something. We need to watch the options markets and the short interest in all these US listed China equities right. because the guys who know about the invasion will be shorting the fuck out of those things right before it's launched. Yeah, well, and we know that the penalty for insider trading if you're Chinese is rather minimal. I don't know if you saw the Cheetah Mobile thing this week. So back in maybe 2015, 2016, uh, turns out the senior management sold about 31 or $33 million of stock. Like, clear, like these guys couldn't even disguise the fact that they 
dumped a ton of stock ahead of like terrible, terrible announcements. And I think the SEC combined fine was about $150,000. So <laughs> that's a pretty sick deterrent for uh, Well, Chinese I mean, they had management. to pay legal fees, which is probably at least eight times that. Yeah, so um, there you go. No Neil Shen, it turns out. Anyways, um, should we get on to sold, insulting people? Well, almost, but I just want to yes. point out the, I think your analysis is not entirely accurate there because you said, there's no penalty for Chinese insider trading. Mm-hmm. What I'm talking about would fall mon- more under the definition of congressional non-insider mm. trading. So it's loophole That's for fair. them. Yeah, That's you don't, fair. There's, there's no way. They, they won't even have to hire a lawyer over That's this fair. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, if the Nancy Pelosi of China is listening, we know what you're doing. Well, I have a feeling that a lot of the, you know, they're, they're communists, but a lot of the people in that government are a pretty, pretty Nancy pelosi up when it yeah. comes to uh, their capital markets activities. Fair. Um, so the next item is fake rabbi Lord and Taylor bit. Talk to us about this. Anytime I see a Bloomberg headline that says fake rabbi, I'm obviously drawn to it. Okay. Of course. And this was awesome. There was a guy who pretended to be a rabbi. Um, hired a couple of people it was kind of unclear what he really hired them for stiff them out of a bunch of cash um had several meetings with lord and taylor which is a kind of now defunct was it a department store or jewelry specialist yeah Yeah. so it's kind of are they still in business they were are they like maybe they were around or something like yeah like teetering i mean they're not quite at the blockbuster stage but they're definitely they in the radio okay. shack area which oh. is something we also need to talk about um but um so this guy was like a fake rabbi the details of like his engagement with lord and taylor were somewhat like uninteresting my favorite bit was how he told some people he was a millionaire some people he was a multi-billionaire that at various points um He'd, Isn't there a short seller we know I, who does that too? I was going to say, it It was almost like Fraser Perrin got religion. And uh, <laughs> at varying points, he said he worked for different government agencies and stuff. And uh, I'm really hoping someone picks up the movie rights because I think this will be an awesome Netflix special. So um, I read that. I'm, I'm you know... Again, the details of like the bid and whatever, who really cares? But the fact that Lord and Taylor engaged is also quite awesome. I'm, I was almost wondering like what was the end game? Was he gonna actually get them to agree and then run around with an SPV and be like, hey, I got these idiots to agree to sell. Like, do you wanna finance the trade? But wasn't there something similar to that a couple of years ago where some guy claimed that he'd raised the money to, is it acquire a company or acquire an asset? Do you remember what I'm talking about? I know some there have ran- been guys some who put out these he put out a press fake release. press releases, yeah. yeah, and it was typically but, to like get the oh, but he was uh, trying, wasn't it the he, Tupperware thing? Um, yeah, it might have been like he was actually trying to raise the money. Oh, okay, right, but he but he didn't have it. He just <laughs> said he did, and anyway, I, yeah. I wish I could remember this better. I mean, it's, these guys are probably looking at like half the guys in Silicon Valley and thinking, well, they can do it. Like, why the fuck can't we do it with a real business? Like, it <laughs> seems to be a little bit more fair. Well, well that's the problem. It's yeah. a real business. I mean, your, it's your first mistake is trying to raise money with a real business. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, but don't worry. There'll be more religions being insulted later on in the episode. Um, so, so that was Lord and Taylor. Okay, well, I don't know. Speaking of fake bids, mm. Elon Musk's boring company. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of fake bids, Elon Musk's boring company. Yeah. So this company, <laughs> so I just you, you slurred the words a little bit. I just <laughs> get, want to make sure everybody. Yeah, under, it's fine, guys. We're, we're only filming this at nine a.m. <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> <It's a cue. laughs> don't worry. Which means you're two <laughs> hours in. <laughs> Actually, here's some fucked up shit. Um, my wife just found out today that uh, school where my daughter is now going, this elementary school, they uh, just canned this 23-year-old newly hired teacher, first grade teacher, because she was drinking in class. Me? Whoa. Yeah. How did anyone know? Well, uh, well the, actually, the, actually the, fu- the fucked up part was 
the, the parents didn't know about this for a while because what they ended up doing was they brought in a substitute for a few days mm -hmm. and then after I think three days they just took this class and there were four other first grade classes and so they just sprinkled the students among those those four classes but parents weren't told for a little while I think it was when their kids started coming home and, and talking I, you know, about I, the I different teacher I actually think that's a really unfair double standard because the little I know about college sports in America is that actually quite a lot of the coaches are drunk and most of them are taking home like between five and seven million a year so I think that's a really fucked up double standard to apply to uh, school teachers that's not fair Texas made Steve Sarkeesian promise that he would stay sober during practices and games. Right. I mean, couldn't you just let her stay sober through classes and get fucked up in recess? <laughs> <laughs> just trying to put out a solution to an obvious problem. Um, anyways, I mean, look, we all know the only reason any of the parents noticed the new teacher was she was obviously really hot. Yeah, but they, but they didn't. They didn't think <laughs> she was gone. She probably was a little bow wow, man, when you think about it. Like, you're 23 female and you're an alcoholic? Like, wow. you got to be ugly. I mean, <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Like, wow, what? this is taking a different No, no, like, turn. you're 23. Life is good. Life is good. Life is good. You're Life 23. Good. Yeah. And you're a woman. Like, women don't tend to become alcoholics as early as men do. So... I mean, they just, you know, got out of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wait till later in life. Dude, when you can hold a plank for four minutes, you can drink all the vodka you want during the day. He's talking about me. It's true. Yes. Talking I, about your word for vodka. Drink. Yeah. I mean, he, he held a pretty good plank for what, 90 seconds? 90 seconds. It's not and bad. It's like. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not, it's no four minutes. I, mean, I, I wasn't even going to mention it, to be quite honest. Yeah. Let's put that in the marketing deck. Clearly. Yeah, I think go. it's about time you updated your bio. It's only three pages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, um, back to markets, right, Krista? Of course. Back okay, so the Boring too. Company. So this is a company, as you know, yeah. that makes tunneling machines. And the idea is Elon Musk has talked about how he's going to revolutionize urban transportation by drilling these networks of tunnels. And the first one that they've put into service is in Las Vegas and it just goes between some casinos and they just have like some Teslas in there that just drive you from A to B and back. So anyway, I was at an event recently and I happened to randomly sit next to somebody who's turns out to be a senior executive of the Boring Company. And um, it's just like, hey man, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be a dick here, but legitimately. Did he know like who you were on the short seller? Yeah, did you really say that? I, I did really say that. I'm not trying to be a dick here. I'm just legitimately... I think your job is trivial. Curious. Want to understand. <laughs> I didn't come to that conclusion yet. <laughs> what, what is it about the... Bo how did... Like, this is just... This is an old technology, yeah. right? Like, tunneling's been around for over 100 Forever. years. What is it that is different about this it, that's so great? And he starts to say, oh, well... Imagine that if you leave a sports event, you have all these people and they're trying to crowd and get into trains and something, something, something. Right, but you guys just have Teslas there. Right, and so that'll make the crowding, that'll lessen the crowding because, well, what? Well, I'm there's software. So we can, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm legitimately trying to understand. I have an open mind and none of it made sense. It was all just gobbledygooks we have software we can send the teslas there ahead of time and they all drive it's a loop so they'll just drive in a circle you don't have to <laughs> but dude, like it just we did think of the perfect actual use for the boring company because you remember how we were saying that a lot of older people don't want to give up their driver's licenses long after they're actually really fucking dangerous on the road and I get I, it. Like I've it's... got, I've got two parents who <laughs> each, each of them would fit that description. Right, and so you know, I, I understand it. Like older, it's like kind of like giving up your independence now. With Uber and things, maybe it's less of an issue. But a lot of older people like really don't want to give up their driver's license. And so we were like an actual, genuine, awesome, fucking life-saving use for the boring company is you have the tunnels with cars going at like 16 miles an hour or 80 miles an hour, who the fuck cares? 
and you just allow people who are above the age of like 75 or visually impaired to use it because you could do so much less damage in a single lane than you can if you have to like switch lanes, move over, drive for 15 hours across okay. country. So did you pitch that to him? So I had forgotten about that conversation. When you started talking about this just now, I thought you were gonna say the, the idea is to have the 75 on ups drive the tunneling machines. <laughs> <laughs> Try like that one too. That's weirdly. Who says they can't? Okay. Try not to drive it off the beach into the. Oh, uh, uh, shit. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, so, um, I still don't understand. What, what was the conclusion? Oh, no. I, the there was no. <laughs> the, the conclusion. And the guy kept saying, well, you know, once we IPO, man, my stock <laughs> options are going to be worth a lot of money. So I said, you will okay, probably same. be laughing to the bank. But I still have no idea what the fuck this company does, man. <laughs> like, of all yeah. the Elon Musk companies, like, this is by far the least cool sounding, mm -hmm. right? Rocket company, yeah. yeah. You know, electric car company, fuck yeah. Solar company, yeah, mm -hmm. kind of. Mm. I mean... Look, relative to we dig tunnels in the ground and yeah. stick yeah, cars in there to drive in a circle. I really do don't understand that. It oh. yeah. So that one, so, okay. that that one's uh, that one's clearly fucked. Of course, that one will probably go public with like yeah. a market cap of like fifty billion dollars or something. But um, yeah, and it'll probably you know, make a bid for my house as part of the whole. <laughs> section of town you no know. they'll um they'll get one of those like land orders that's like no we, we have to pay like de minimis to tunnel underneath your house right yeah uh, seriously. what are they called like the confiscation orders or something oh the well it's, Dem it's eminent domain eminent yeah. domain yeah and you'll be like but you know but yeah well, after we tunneled we we decided that we weren't actually going to use that but uh thanks anyway eminent domain we have to put your <laughs> toilet on reverse <laughs> <laughs> Um, speaking of solar, um, you know, really interesting short report, I think, last week on um, Array by um, Jehoshaphat. And I don't want to discuss the short report. I want to discuss... Okay, but hold on first. We are short Array. Yes, the hedge short fund Array. The hedge fund short Array. Um, I don't want to discuss the short report because it wasn't as interesting as the response. Um... Over the years, we've seen pretty template responses from management teams, and we see really template responses from the analysts. And the analyst response, if uh, again, once you're not watching this on video, you're missing out, because the analyst response is usually, Ugh, the company management. <laughs> like, and sometimes it's like, Ugh, the company management. Mostly it's like, Ugh, the company <laughs> management. And this was really interesting. This started off by saying how short reports are awful, but that actually this short report was better than most short reports, although it had some mistakes, which meant it was completely wrong. It was the most retarded response to a short report from a guy working at Northland Securities, which like, let's be honest, who the fuck are they? Yeah, I mean, that's like the kind of place that I would imagine, uh, what was that he, cancer he, analyst? He, he um, graduated last in his class from his <laughs> online program. Like, you know, that's how you end up in Northland Securities. I mean, that's that's where Steve Halper from uh, ex-cancer <laughs> analyst who covered eHealth and Nanox, that's like kind of where I expect him to land after he's done with uh, his new gig, which is, um, I think, invest, outsourced investor relations. Um, if you're wondering why I'm picking on Steve, it's because he's intellectually dishonest in addition to being stupid. Uh, we once had a phone call with him where we were asking genuinely honest, not pointed questions, and he almost cried. So Steve, oh. if you want to come on and you want to talk about that, I'm here for you. Hey man, that sounds like he's got the temperament that's perfect to teach first grade in elementary school. <laughs> yeah. As long as and he can he stay spent, sober right. most of the day, well, he'll he be okay. Well, if he long enough on the sell side, I doubt he's going to have the stomach to stay sober. At least, yeah. well, what time do they get out of school here? Uh, let's see, it's a little before three, I think. Yeah, that's a little after lunch. I never have to pick my daughter up, so I don't really know. <laughs> um, no, but in terms of analyst responses, Sinoforce, many years ago, mm -hmm. there was this one analyst. <laughs> so he, he held a conference call with clients, mm -hmm. and I think there was media on the call. So it was reported widely that he called our report 
quote, a pile of crap. <laughs> really? This guy, yeah. But this guy was with some brokerage firm called Dundee Securities. Uh-huh. Like, what? <laughs> Sounds like you, I think that's still around, you know. You calling you from fucking crocodile fucking Dundee <laughs> Securities, like insulting somebody else's report? So, uh, it's not a report. It's a report. <laughs> Uh, so I, that know, one was really insulting, man. Okay. Like, that sticks with me after all these years. Yeah, I mean, he I, went into it, IR as well. Well, I mean, that's... In, in-house in IR for some potash scam somewhere in Africa. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so I mean, look, the if you are watching and you do work on the sell side, the career part from creditizing short reports is straight to outsourced IR. So be very careful. Very careful. Well, if you graduated maybe in the... 25th or higher percentile of your online program. <laughs> Maybe you have a few more options. Fair. Um, so as you know, I was out of office this week. Yes. Um, no, you weren't. <laughs> no, you weren't. Day, uh, one, day did, one, you didn't have clothes. Monday, you didn't have clothes. <laughs> Monday, you didn't have clothes. Tuesday, I got some clothes for him because it was making nice. me uncomfortable. Where'd you, where'd you go to buy the outfit? Is it just like online, it looks child-like Robin outfit? Mm, not exactly. Okay. This is authentic. Okay. Authentic. Nice. Um, Does that have some of Adam West's DNA on it somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> it's not oh going to really be authentic without. I mean, the sleep mask actually looks kind of comfortable. He, there was other things, too. He had like... The I, gloves? Yeah. Did Robin have gloves? This Robin did. Oh, okay. Well, Batman has gloves. Does Robin? Yeah, maybe he has green gloves. Yeah, there's green gloves. Yeah. Okay. Matches Next time. His little green little. But um, yeah, so you were out moist. of office, but I didn't get an out of office from you because you and Carson don't do out of office. So at a, I don't think like most people really do I out do. of office anymore. But we well, you're always like, I'm out of office on PTO. Yeah. Nobody cares. <laughs> Um, no. Except for Carson, he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, Chris is gonna be like out of office for four hours on Tuesday, like, yeah, yeah, I know, like, yeah, yeah, I know. Like it plays it freaking, cool. I know, yeah. like, no one really cares. Meanwhile, it's like he's no, but nobody cares if you're on PTO. I'm just like, you know. Well, the, the question is, what is the correct etiquette? Because I actually sent someone an email the other week, and I got this super detailed out of office. Like, hey, I'm in Portugal, and you know, if it's on Tuesday, I'm gonna be at the theater, and if it's Wednesday, I'm gonna be sunning myself on the beach. So, it's crazy. I was pretty stunned and thought it was far too much information, but it- I've never seen that before. It got me thinking, you should what could it. my out of office be? I know. So I went with something along the lines of, Oh, and then it was like, you know, if it's urgent, call so-and-so. So I went with something along the lines of, hey, if I'm not on, you know, I'm out of office, I'm re-watching the bit in the big short with, you know, where he pulls the Jenga blocks, I probably got my pants down jerking off because that's my favorite <laughs> bit in the whole movie. Uh, if it's super urgent and related to trading, you're totally fucked because like none of the rest of us really know how to do it. Um, <laughs> so stop panicking now. <laughs> I'm joking. There are more than one person here who knows how to trade. Um, and I was just w for watching uh, for watching you trade. Right? Does. I mean, that's watching you trade, man. That's that's a thing of beauty. I mean, the elegance. And um, we're gonna see him trade. <laughs> And yeah, and I, I'm just kind of curious, like, you know, should people start putting like these more amusing out of offices or should we just not have out of offices? Because it's kind of like, other than maybe block leave at banks when I think you are genuinely not allowed to respond to emails, I don't know anyone in the working world who doesn't respond to emails or like at least look at it maybe like every day just to check nothing urgent is going on. Go ahead. No, I, I mean, I know you want to push back on that, but well, the thing so, that pissed me off was when I was out of the office a few if weeks ago. If you say this, no, I will you, walk out of that door <laughs> and you'll never see me again. Okay, I want you to try that because I bet you'll forget to unhook your microphone and you'll trip and fall or <laughs> you'll something. You'll be right back there. I don't even remember your name. So, yeah, after you get up from the floor, that's true. So, a few weeks ago... I was out of the office and you responded to somebody who emailed you know, me. I just said, don't say it. No, you're like, he oh, he's out of the office feelings. today on PTO. I'm like. No, first of all, it wasn't somebody. First of all, it was our PR company. And I, 
I don't. I, I think that's somebody. That, I, I, you might not think that PR I would lives never matter. Say that. PR I mean, lives. So, PR lives matter. They don't matter. They do matter. No, They're, they are not somebody. Someone that I was anyway. just like, wait till Monday. He's you know on personal time off He's with his family. The PTO. weekend? No, it doesn't PTO? Personal time off. No, doesn't that stand for paid time off? You could also interpret it as personal time. So off and I'm and family. I'm particularly insulted at like the paid time off notion because. Yeah. But I didn't say paid time off. You I said, said PTO. PTO. Everybody's personal time no, off. No, no, it's and I don't get time you are off. Wrong. I just. I just wanted. And people I check not, all my emails. It was a long weekend. I just it, wanted people. Like this wasn't that important. That's okay. all I was. I was being protective. Instead, no, it's, it's just, like yeah. never ever. You make me look I like never, the biggest, the biggest pussy owner of a business. That's like, a whole I know. different show. Well, dude, we you posted know? a job online. We should make it sound appealing and sensitive here, and then crush them once they get it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, until they crush us with the lawsuit for you know, oh, whatever. These mm, lawsuits. Whatever you're proposing. Well, we are in Texas. So yeah. At least that. I mean, that's better. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad we we solved that one. Um, guys, we're not the only people taking time out of the office though. A lot of Russian ministers have been oh, yeah. taking out permanent time out of the office. Um, well, it's you know when they go and they inspect those windows a little too closely, it's it's the Russian windows, man. They just don't make them like they used to. My my question is, and for people who aren't following, um, last week a guy. Uh, fell off his yacht so like somewhere that probably so wasn't there. Somewhere it's not going to. his yacht, what do you mean? I mean, <laughs> it, it, it well, was there's... so obvious that he was, like, you know, fell off his yacht. Blown? Uh Yeah, it was so oh. obvious that Bloomberg in the article, like, I think might have put in, like, inverted commas, like, you know, it is, the, whatever, the eighth Russian minister to um, unexpectedly die. since die. the start of the Ukraine yeah. war. Yeah, and then noted how all of the others have been either critical of Putin or the war or just not supportive. Um, so the question for me is, is Putin just not, like, is he hiring worse and worse kind of, like, KGB agents to knock these dudes off? Or is he just becoming increasingly bold me like, look, we don't even need to throw the guy through a fucking window or poison him. We we can just tie him to a lead brick yeah, and I, throw him off the yard. I think there's some actual real intel value in this. Mm -hmm. Because there are all these rumors or statements that mm -hmm. Putin's actually very ill. Blood yeah. cancer, that sort of thing. And this is so unimaginative and unoriginal. Okay, the first time somebody, you know, the, some, the window failed and the person mm -hmm. fell through it. That was kind of funny, okay, mm. right? Like, yeah, yeah, the Russian windows break. But now we're on eight or nine that died the same way. And like, this is a guy who knocked off somebody in the UK yeah. Yeah. with fucking polonium in the tea yeah. and then tried to knock somebody else off with that. The nerve um, agent, yeah. Yeah, the nerve agent that Wirecard uh, got the yeah. formula for. So, like, he's creative. He's like, he's definitely like a James Bond you know, Ian Fleming level creativity when it comes to sure. killing people. So this is definitely bolstering the, the view that he's in seriously ill health because if he can't think of more original ways to kill guys and it's on number nine the same way, like, mm. I don't know, man. I, you know, and I think we should be worried about this because the next guy very well will be worse than well, this one, on, on albeit a, more creative with how he kills his political enemies. Yeah, on a serious point, with you, Pierre, and I, I think what's really scary, and I, you know, hard to say how accurate any of this is given the informational gaps with Russia, but, you know, Ukraine have now advanced significantly. There's, um, there's this sort of um, mock election thing for the separate, like, well, you know, the, 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 the regions that right, Russia's the regions. occupying. Um, they're going to get 99% of the vote because. Dudes Case. from Wagner yeah. with these huge guns are standing outside the polling station, so that will probably discourage anyone from not. I, I don't even think that right. anybody's going to count real ballots. Exactly, just... but what's what's really scary about this now is it's unclear that there's any way for Putin to even get like a 
quasi-win here and go back to the people and be like, well, look, we did do some stuff that kind of worked. And he's becoming increasingly isolated. I mean, both India and China are publicly rebuking or distancing. Semi. yeah. But in a way that they previously won, and regardless of whether there's a lot of support behind the scenes, that is at least publicly a bit of a change in position from them. The guy is becoming increasingly isolated. He has used chemical weapons in Syria. He's got a nuclear reactor that like, they seem to use as target practice, like Napoleon was using the fucking Sphinx. I mean, they are really teetering on the edge of like a bunch of really dangerous ideas and then he's kind of actively throwing out the nuclear threat i'm not saying like we're sat here bunkered down being like ah oh, it's a strong probability but i feel like the probability of something going seriously fucking wrong has increased from not very much to a little bit more and it's kind of frightening because again if he is sick or he's increasingly isolated and he keeps throwing people out of buildings you know he's like a very isolated crazy paranoid dude well the worst part though is that again the next guy would probably be worse i don't think the next guy from what i've gathered talking to people who i feel have subject matter expertise here that if putin were suddenly replaced Mm -hmm. if he fell out of his own window, yeah, the person who replaces him is not going to say, oh, this was a horrible idea. He led us into this catastrophe. You know, we're going to withdraw. It would be more along the lines of he didn't have the balls to finish this shit off. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't have the balls to go far enough. I have the balls to go far enough. That to me is is one of the real, really scary um, ways that this can escalate mm-hmm. in, in my view. But um yeah, I mean, what do you what do you do? It's you, you have to. We're we're in this world where people who have mass massively transgressed have been getting away with shit, mm-hmm. right? And we can look at it in the capital markets, of course, like Elon or whatever, and you know Ryan Cohen. Um, but certainly in our politics, yes. And I mean, we let this dude get away with this in 2014 the world was just Mm -hmm. including the u.s led by the u.s in shoulder shrugging and well that's unfortunate so how do you if you are ukraine let or the west how do you accept as victory anything less than completely ejecting russia from the 2013 borders of ukraine it's tough I don't think there's a great solution on either side. Yeah. That's uplifting. Yeah. Mark is probably up on Monday if enough people listen to this. You know, but this is, we're filming this on Thursday, what's today, Friday, Friday, Friday. what's today's date? Wow. Uh, 24, 3rd? Well, this is awesome. Anyway. Yeah, the 24th. It's the 23rd, thank you. Friday the 23rd? Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, right, right before we came in here, I looked at the screen. It's a good fucking day, man. Like, yeah. the dog shit wish on, we weren't on our hedged. screen. <laughs> I know, right? I wish we weren't hedged. But the hedges are generally going down a decent bit less than yes. than the dog shit. So, it's a good way to head into the weekend. It is. Um, yeah, so if, you know, Russia nukes us over the weekend. <laughs> you know, at least we ended it on a high note. With some alpha. <laughs> with some nice. alpha. Yeah, with some recent alpha. Nice. Uh, um, another great Bloomberg story, Krista. What Bloomberg story is that? GE being pilfered by China. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. So, story pops up on Bloomberg about um, Chinese infiltrating GE and stealing their secrets. I didn't bother reading the rest of the article because (laughs) we already know what GE's true secret was and it's accounting manipulation. (laughs) And so the shocking thing for me was the idea that China, like the master of all accounting manipulation, who was so good. I mean, dude, they're so good. They're on different levels, okay? China's the crude, we're just gonna make this shit up type of accounting. GE is the more like, well, you know, we move this here and there, there, and we got that transaction, and then like, you know, we'll borrow this money here, but we'll end it there, and you know, here's how we get the number. 
Right, but China's so good that they actually convinced all the hedge funds on the street that like it was okay, or at least to pretend it was real okay. Other than um, what's his name, uh, is it Nelson Peltz who went activist on it at Tryon? Like, other than that, yeah. lots of people were like, oh, these numbers are made up. So, I wonder if China learned anything from GE. Well, I think that's just a testament to how large the Chinese intelligence gathering apparatus is. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're actually putting people on GE trying to steal its industrial secrets. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think uh, that's, it, they just have a massive, massive Ministry of State Security. My favorite thing about GE, I read the Lights Out book that, um, that the journalist uh, wrote, and uh, my favorite thing by far was that um, ML had two jets. Right. And the kind of, which is just grotesque in and of itself, the established reason for that was he didn't want to be stuck somewhere and not be able to fly out. But apparently the real reason was he only liked running on a certain type of treadmill and the other jet used to carry that treadmill. So I just... Is that true? I have no way of proving it, but it's read in the book. Read the book. Yeah, read the book, Krista. Ah. Don't wait for the movie. Um, probably won't make a movie out of it. But, uh, yeah. So that's, that's pretty crazy. That's one thing, yeah. A fucked up accounting doesn't necessarily make for the best movie. Although yeah. there was the Enron thing. Yeah, how do you make thing. that? Yeah, that's true. Smartest guys in the room. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. Um, it was more about the personalities. Yeah, were there other good accounting fraud? I mean, the Wirecard documentary was, was Why fun. Why hasn't anybody done a Sinoforce document or, like, movie, though? That's, you know, yeah, that's seriously. the opportunity. That's... Yeah. Who, who would you want playing yourself? <laughs> <laughs> who would you want playing yourself? Hmm. I don't think. I, I could see Vince some, Vaughn. Some, some porn star. I, I could see Vince Vaughn. You think Lexington Steel would do it? <laughs> Vince Vaughn. Yeah. Huh? Vince Vaughn. Um, I yeah, okay. Yeah. Much taller than I am, but okay. Really? I don't, I don't think he's that he's, he's, he's tall. I think he's like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Really? I yeah, so. Vince Vaughn is yes. Vince Vaughn is a tall person. He is tall. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, like I don't know. Five ten. <laughs> That's yeah, pretty we, tall, right? We, we pretend you have a big cock <laughs> for like an hour and listen to you putting, <laughs> cutting me down to a size that I'm not. That's something I've realized that Muddy Waters. Like, not only am I short just for a regular human, but like <laughs> Muddy Waters actually everyone's pretty tall because um, we've got. You're all six foot? Yeah. Right. Alex, I think, is probably six, six one, one. Maybe. He's six Scott, Scott's got to be Scott's six one. Scott's about six, one, six, six two. two. Yeah. Even Anthony's not actually short. Right. Yeah. He's uh, probably about six feet. Yeah. And then we've got a um, guy in Vietnam. Like, and then we interviewed a dude this week who was yeah. like, we, six nine or something. Seven so one. Seven one? Seven one. Seven yeah. one. We, we just got to get a picture of the two seven of us. Whoops. Like him and I. Yeah, We're the same person. height, right? Uh, yeah, I am in I, heels. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, or maybe I'm like an inch taller. I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, so Vince Vaughn, you're right, six five. Wow. Okay, you're so he like can't play two. you. No, I'm not six two. You know I'm what? six. I'm not six. six? I'm not yeah, six in that two. Case, what the hell am I talking no, to you for? Danny DeVito. Yeah, it's, all really? you have to know is it's all you have to know is it's I a lot Danny's taller than you are. Tall. Danny's too tall to play you. A lot taller than you are. Yeah. Maybe Ray Leo. Oh, he died. Um, oh, I love that. Mm. Guy. I like that guy oh, too. God. All right, well, I just first. I just know well, that I'll should be played by Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but that dude was that dude was you know with uh, Bar Raffaelli yeah. while I think while she was supposedly dating Leo. So, yeah, cut you know, to Leo. Yeah, so I think that's why Leo invented that whole thing about I dump chicks when they're 25. I think it's he because of... He didn't invent it. I, no, I think it's because... Uh, uh, I think it's because... ...was cucking him yeah. uh, with Bar Raffaele. Who, who so he had to come it? up with some excuse for not that's dating her anymore. That's what they're saying, but like he didn't... Like, he's I mean, like, it's factually true. No, but I think it's because like yeah. it's just like, shit. I can't believe shit. this, this dude, this dude that? who should be in Otisville <laughs> is actually like, you know, got mm. my girlfriend to cheat on me with him, so... I just have to pretend like I'm dumping her, and from now on, I'll just make it a thing to like dump supermodels at that age, so that everybody thinks like I walked away. Yeah, huh. I think that was the cover. Yeah. So anyway, he should be played by Gilbert Gottfried. We're gonna cheers. 
We're done. No, oh. we're not no, done. no, 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 no. <laughs> Dude, you got more shit yeah. on the board no, to read there. I know, but come it's, it's past the time. Come on, come on, come on. We, we could There's... save some of this these golden listen, little nuggets. Listen, we for we next time. we pro we promised we One promised Freddie that we would we promised Freddie that we would talk about the passing of the monarch. Did we not? Oh yeah, did I miss that? You missed You did. You missed about two thirds of what's on the board. The death of the monarch. Yeah, so you know it's it's really interesting. Like the the reaction to the passing, um, I think just across people of all walks of life. There was has, a lot of celebration. Well, the, there's been like a real outpouring. I think when you look back on the monarch's body of work, it's it's truly remarkable. And, and just to be clear to everyone, I'm talking about Spat King Chamath, uh, like the, the true monarch of garbage. And- Not the queen. He walked away, exactly. The he buried- The Warren Buffett of- Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> he buried this week two SPACs that he couldn't find a company with an attractive, uh, attractive targets for listing. Yet magically, when valuations were much higher two years ago, he found like six companies to take public at an astronomical price. Um, the guy has cashed in hundreds of millions of dollars of promote. He promoted SPACs as IPO 2.0. There were all these, you know, long, um, long debates as to how this was enabling the average investor to engage in venture-like venture returns. So it's really cool that, that you called him out at a time when very few people were you know, prepared to stick their head in the lion's mouth and call out a real Pied Piper. I mean, he was buying GameStop and donating the proceeds to charity and hawking SPACs like every second day. So it was, it was I, cool that you called him out. Yeah, I guess I got to tell you, though, nothing about that seemed courageous or hard to predict. <laughs> You know, no. just, I mean, I, I made up the SPAC Jesus name for him when I was in my kitchen. <laughs> right. I think it was a Sunday morning. I woke up and saw this tweet that he had sent earlier that morning saying climate change and inequality mm -hmm. are the only two things that matter. Something like that. And so, like, <laughs> yeah. which SPAC would Jesus do? <laughs> right. Hashtag SPAC Jesus. So, yeah. Uh, but it is kind of funny. I mean, when he did that fake run for California governor, just so obvious and craven, like mm -hmm. what this guy was about. So um, the only thing I, if I ever do get a chance to talk to him mm -hmm. and I get a one like, what the fuck were you thinking question? Mm -hmm. My question would be, when you tweeted out that picture of yourself in your gym with those little chicken legs, yeah. What the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> no, was... When he's like, oh, I run 18 miles a day and row for 42 more and this and that and Pilates, you know, and he's trying to, I think, draw attention to the upper body. But yeah. all you could see are these like, these matchsticks coming out of the, the shorts. So... Yeah, it was, it was truly, I mean, that was a real error of judgment. A pair of sweatpants would have saved him a lot of embarrassment. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, of all the stupid shit this guy has publicly done that's that's up there and i i yeah. actually think and I, I don't know for sure but i, I think he should have called you <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, think. I think that was genuinely around like the top tick in market cap for pretty much yeah. right that that was a real sign and then there was maybe about you know 20 percent lower was the tweet that he sent out i'm about to really fuck some shit up yep there was that. Um, Which meant... There was like the railing against uh, Hindenburg right after the Clover. Um, after oh, Clover, the Clover Health. Short, yeah. and that's, I don't but know it wasn't a is. short, actually. No, you're right. That's, he wasn't short. One. He was just like, I'm just going to expose this because well, it's a pile of shit. Yeah, but actually, but that was the first activist yep. short seller to dip his toe back into the market yep. after um, the GameStop and the, the meme stock thing. So he understandably didn't actually want... Or maybe nobody was willing to be short mm. um, ahead of that report, but that's the one that basically showed this meme stock bubble has like this thing is largely in the mirror in the rearview mirror. Yeah. So, got to give credit where oh, credit's due there.
Yeah. That was good. But um, preparing for the next um, bull market, I realized that actually, like Chamath, I quite want to own a sports team. Unlike Chamath, um, I'm not a charlatan or good on the long side. So, um, well, you know, he only owns 3% of a sports team, I think. Yeah. But it's three percent more than me. So I and I want to own. I want to. I want to own gets, my own. It gets you like one parking space <laughs> at the arena. Exactly. So I want to own my own sports team. Now I've looked at a lot of professional sports and even like esports. Chances are my net worth is not going to get to a level where I can actually make a credible bid for a sports team. Not even three percent of a. Maybe we'll see. We'll not see. Not even how. a parking space. <laughs> <laughs> but what I thought about is is my own sport. Okay, and I want to borrow and and I want this sport funded by the smartest investors on the planet. So obviously they the come Saudis. from Saudi. Yeah. And I've been thinking, well, let's combine elements of that. And then I kind of think back to UFC and how in the early days people like this is absolutely barbaric. You know, bare knuckle. Like who's going to watch this? I think it was licensed in um, like. New Jersey and one other state and the first fight was watched by like four people and a chicken or something and so I, I look at that and I'm like okay I want it funded by the Saudis but I want some blood guts and gore and I think there's got to be an element of absurdity to it as well so what I have thought of is ostrich jousting now the reason is, I think, ostriches um, are just hilarious creatures. If you've ever seen an ostrich, I mean, you look at them, like, they are fucking ridiculous-looking animals. But they are pretty fast. I think they can get to, like, 45, 50 miles an hour. Really? Now, the problem with riding ostriches is you're probably not going to hit top speed if, you know, a guy they're like... They're huge, right? They're pretty they're big. They're big, yeah. I mean, the taller than maybe me not yeah. quite Vince form but if you have a guy who's like 250 pounds riding right. an ostrich you're not going to hit top speed however in the UAE they do a lot of camel racing now for camel racing they used to use children and it was actually pretty dangerous not for the camel unsurprisingly so they used to like velcro like three and four year olds on and now they use robots yeah it's such yeah. a humane wonderful society so there's a lot of five-year-old former champion camel jockeys who are out of work. And I want to bring back kind of that element of absurdity, blood sport. So I think the whole thing is, you know, ostrich jousting is where it's at. Um, you know, I'm speaking with a couple of pretty interested parties at the moment. We're, we're probably going to auction off the first four to five franchises um, if, if you're interested. And then... We're gonna see if we can get it licensed in New Jersey, because um, there's a bunch of like exotic weird people who keep like exotic pets. So, so is this supposed to just be a domestic league, or are you thinking starting off globally? So that's that's an excellent question. Um, I think the idea is to break the U.S. because it is the biggest market. Mm. Um, so you know if we can, and you know the question for me is if you want like just kind of straight joust or if you want like a track kind of setting because maybe you combine a race with jousting i kind of haven't hmm. entirely thought this through yet um look i also like the idea of or is it like kind of like dressage as well right you, you could with, oh dude that would be awesome yeah. like dressage so maybe oh, whoa hold on hold Ostrage. on whoa. you have two ends so it's dressage and jousting okay so they're like you know guys coming over like a six foot fence with an ostrich <laughs> jousting and if you get there first you can joust down and like skewer the other six year old oh god this is awesome so oh, wow. for those of you who are out there who are interested and ideally know anything as i said the first few franchises are being auctioned off and um we'll work the details out see but i got my global sports league thing that i came up with a long time ago oh, true we go. the the world cup of hooliganism mm -hmm. so I, I've always just been so fascinated by this culture of people who go to fucking soccer games to fight, which makes no sense unless it's youth sports. But for actual <laughs> professional and adult players, this is this is just so fascinating to me that these people really care. And they care whether, I guess if it's their 
like their shitty little towns club or it's their country's national team. And I know there are these guys who get their passports in Europe, yeah. get their passports confiscated in the weeks leading up to the World Cup every four years because they're just known hooligans. So I love this idea of a little bit before the World Cup, holding this competition of great nations and called the World Cup of Hooliganism. And so basically, the way it would work is there'd be a bar in which the match is held. But then you've got two adjacent bars, right? So each national team is in the bar getting pissed up. Here's the one thing I can't figure out. And because you're into obscure shit like Robbie Williams, maybe you'll have a good opinion. But should should they be watching like their team's best moments on video or worst, most humiliating moments on video mm. for this? So okay, well, so they're, watch, they're watching something, they're getting pissed up, and then you go into the bar, and you, you basically have to capture the other team's flag, light it on fire, and then put it up by pissing on it before being killed. And, <laughs> and so basically, and I was thinking, I almost did this, this years ago, as an actual social experiment to see, basically say, hey, we're taking applications now for national teams, so send in a video of you doing your most hooligan illest shit to see if you make the cut. And I was really curious to see what kind of just unbelievably stupid fucking things people would do in the hopes that this is real. But I also realized that they would probably be hurting a lot of people besides themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't care about anybody who actually like vo volitionally undertakes this. Right. But yeah, and then I thought, okay, that's a little bit heavy on the conscience. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and maybe I'll, I'd get sued. But you know, when I look back on it, if, 46-year-old Carson could tell, you know, like 29, 30-year-old Carson, give him some advice about this, it'd be, yeah, go ahead and do it before you have any money, asshole. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a lot to be said for that because the next World Cup winning is going to be in, like, Qatar, and it looks like it's going to be miserable and not just for the people who built the stadiums. Um, I mean, I think people are going to be in Dubai, get... Bust in, watch a game, yeah, and then but they get busted. Miserable. Out. It's suck. I mean, FIFA has never been so generously bribed I know. As, as like the fucking <laughs> Qatar World Cup. Like, you know, it's going to be about 130 degrees Fahrenheit on the field. <laughs> like, you know, Seth and, and Blatter you know, is like, you guys tagged me for corruption. And this fucking right. goes ahead. Right. And, and I love it. It's like under the guise of caring about player safety. You know, it's, it's going to be. 130 Fahrenheit on that playing field. Like, well, you know, let's just see what kind of watches we have for you. you know? like, oh, okay, that's cool. Well, this one even tells the temperature. Perfect. <laughs> uh, did you ever get anywhere with uh, the watches that FIFA, uh, didn't they oh, auction them off and you, you I think you I contacted? Was, yeah, they were going to try to auction off the Parmigianis. My favorite was, wasn't there some like Jor Jordanian royal family member who refused to give his watch back. <laughs> he was part of the FIFA committee that received the bribes so he in Brazil. He just stuck it up his ass and walked home. No, I think he just said, I'm not giving it back. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know, but kind of like when Putin took Bob Kraft's Super Bowl ring, it was just, eh, That was know, awesome. Like, whatever. I heard that's why the, U the US really did give weapons to Ukraine. Bob Kraft <laughs> leaned on him and was like, no guys, I really do want that ring back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, besides Bob Kraft hasn't had the best of luck when he's been dealing with the Chinese recently. True, all wearing all those rings. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, I don't know, is there one more topic we can, can, should? Mm, yeah. Save I think, them for next week. So I think yeah, we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. Um, all right. Do you, think it, do you think the next time we film you'll stick the intro? Why don't you I will. Practice okay. with an outro. I will. Go on, outro Let's... us. No, no. Next time. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, well, cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. The next time. Cool.